Hello and welcome everybody to my talk on smooth analysis of the art gallery problem. This is joint work with Michael Dubbins and Andreas Holmsen and my name is Till or Tillman Milzo. Um, okay, uh, so this research was conducted in Korea and uh, let's get started. Okay, so this is about the art gallery problem. So let me briefly explain what the art gallery problem is. So in the art gallery problem, we have a polygon and we want to place guards such that the entire polygon is seen. So a guard is just, we represent as a single point and a guard can see another point inside the polygon if the line segment between the point and the guard is fully contained inside the polygon. So though this, this guard can see this point, can't see that point because the line segment is not fully contained inside the polygon. Okay, so then the whole region that this guard can see is indicated in green. And uh, actually for this, po this very polygon, four guards are sufficient. And we can even argue that four guards for this polygon are the minimum number of guards because we can also place these four crosses and it's impossible that one guard sees two crosses at the same time. This means we need um, at least as many, um, we need for either cross one guard, so we need four guards. Um, so this would be the optimal solution for, for this input. Okay, so um, this is Michael and me think karaoke in uh, Korea. That's the thing you do in Korea, right? So you see very active research. Um, so one of the open problems in, in the art color problem was, is this problem in NP? So um, NP membership. So you would think uh, as witness, you could just use a guard position, but then there's a problem. So can the guard positions always be described by rational numbers? And if so, can we give a bound on the description complexity of these rational numbers? Like how many bits do we need to represent the nominator and denominator? And so this was asked by several people. I think the first was Shanda Faketa, who once asked a duck stool, but other people asked this question as well. And well, with uh, Mikkel Abrahamsen and Anna Adamaschek, we could show, okay, so the art gallery problem is ETR complete and any irrational uh, algebraic number might come up as the, as the uh, coordinates of the, of the guard solutions. And this implies that if the complexity class NP and ETR are not the same, then, then the answer would be no. And it's an open problem if NP or ETR are, are different or not. It's, it's an, um, but uh, so far we, 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 believe, we believe not. So this is bad news for NP membership, but this is in the worst case. So um, in this paper, we concentrate on a different way to analyze algorithm instead of the worst case, maybe in typical instances, um, this will not happen. So what are typical instances? And so there's this uh, famous uh, notion of smooth analysis where we, um, if we have some input, the worst input, we are allowed to perturb it a little bit. So before I go into the definition, let me explain it a little bit. So here, for instance, the black polygon on the right, um, are we allow to perturb it a little bit um, because we say, so maybe, maybe some practical instances have some structure. Um, they may look a little bit like the black polygon, but maybe not exactly like the black polygon, right? Maybe it looks, because there's always some fuzziness and measurements, maybe it just looks slightly uh, slightly different. And then we would like to um, uh, see if we slightly perturb it, what would be what would be the complexity of this. So to make this formal, uh, and this would then represent uh, maybe a typical instance, because a typical instance had maybe some randomness in it, not a large amount of randomness, it's not a complete random polygon, right, you have structure but maybe some more numbers. So this is how smooth analysis works. So you take the worst instance of, of a given size. So you we take the maximum over all uh, instance of size n. And then we, we look at all perturbations of a small magnitude. So delta represents uh, the magnitude of perturbation. So here, for instance, on in our example, it would be the radius of the circle. And then we look for uh, a perturbed instance at the running time, 
And then we can look at the expected running time for, for this instances. For this instance, and we take the maximum over all instances. So we really want to know what the expected running time for, for um, the worst instance. And the way we can perturb as well, we can perturb vertices, we can perturb edges. This would uh, 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 leave more structure, right? The angles would be preserved. Uh, or we could just inflate everything. Okay. So this is the notion that we studied because worst case was not possible. Um, and that's again a picture of Michael who cuts a pier in his kitchen. Okay, so let me cut to the main result is uh, if we have uh, n vertices and our polygon is included in a, in a box of size L and we allow some perturbation of, of uh, delta, then we can bound the expected number of bits in the worst case with logarithm, logarithm of n L and uh, one over delta, essentially. So this means uh, the dependence on the input parameters is logarithmic. Uh, and this would mean that we can describe guard positions uh, or per guard, we need just a logarithmic number of bits. So guards can be described very efficiently, um, which is in contrast to the worst case where um, we don't know if, if they can be described. Um, because of this ETR hardness. Okay, uh, before I finish, I want to also thank Unjung Kim, who had a lot of fun with us in South Korea as well. And uh, yeah, so our result can also interpret it as um, that we kind of place this uh, uh, articular problem for typical instance in, uh, in the complexity class NP. So for typical instance, it's over in NP time. For the worst case, it's, uh, it's solvable only in um, uh, in the complexity class ETR. Okay, thank you for your attention.